Hello friends, this video on molecular basis of inheritance part 29 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will talk about the process of translation. So by now you already know what is translation. So what is translation? It is the process of polymerization of amino acids to form a polypeptide that is proteins. So the amino acids are being collected from different places by the tRNA. So tRNA is going to bring all the amino acids but in order to form proteins all that is need to, needed to be done is that peptide bond needs to be formed between the amino acids to form polypeptide chains and those polypeptide chains will be the proteins and the sequence in which the amino acids will be brought will be decided by the tRNA based on the sequence of bases on the mRNA. So let us try to focus on how the peptide bond formation takes place to complete the process of translation. So let us suppose this is how here you can see that four persons or four friends are standing holding hands with each other. So similarly when each amino acid is being passed on by the uh, tRNA so those amino acids need to, to be linked together with the help of bond and that bond is going to be the peptide bond. So as you have seen here this portion we are talking about right now. So these are all amino acids joined by peptide bond. So peptide bond formation takes place between the amino acids but whenever you want to form a bond what is required energy is required. So energy for this bond formation is provided by ATP. So ATP will provide whatever energy is required for this bond formation. Now let us see how exactly ATP provides this energy. So let us see how exactly is the energy provided by ATP for polymerization. Now what happens is there is an enzyme called amino acyl tRNA synthetase and this enzyme binds appropriate amino acid to the corresponding tRNA. So as I was telling you that for every tRNA, so every tRNA will have one amino acid binding end and there is another anticodon loop, right? So on the, um, towards the, let us suppose if this is the amino acid binding end. So this is how a tRNA looks like. Roughly, this is how it looks like. So this is the amino acid binding end. So this is where the amino acid binds. Now, when the amino acid binds, there is an enzyme called amino acyl, acyl tRNA synthetase. So this enzyme actually helps in binding the amino acid to the carbo, uh, to the tRNA, right? And this process is known as amino acylation. Amino acylation. Why is it called amino acylation? Because this is the process of addition of an amino acyl group to the tRNA. Now this process occurs in presence of ATP as bond formation needs energy. Any sort of bond formation would need energy. So this process where amino acid binds to tRNA will take place in, in presence of ATP. Now as a result what will happen? High energy bond will be formed between amino acid and tRNA. Now anything which has high energy will be less stable. Right? So something like this, let us suppose if when you feel very much energetic, what happens when you have too much of energy, so you feel very much active, so you keep on moving from one place to another. So that means your stability is less, so you do not remain at one place for a long time because your energy level is very high, you feel like moving here and there, so you are less stable. So wherever energy is more, the stability will be less, whereas if the energy is less, for example, let, let us suppose someday you are not feeling very energetic, you are feeling little weak. So in that case, you don't feel like moving from one place to another. You feel like sitting at the same place. You feel like sleeping. So you are more stable. So always remember it in this way. Energy high means stability less. So in this case, when high energy bond is formed between amino acid and tRNA, then what happens? The bond becomes less stable. So a less stable bond is formed. Now when a less stable bond is formed, 
then the bond can be easily broken as well. So the bond can be easily hydrolyzed. So that is what. So here you can see the amino acid joins to the tRNA. So this bond which is formed, this is a high energy bond. So this is high energy bond which has less stability. So high energy weak bond is formed. Now what happens? Now this tRNA's purpose is to carry these amino acids near the mRNA. So basically this tRNA you can see they are all carrying one one amino acid. These balls which you see here they represent the amino acid. So now when the tRNA comes near the mRNA, so what will happen? This will try to match as per the correct base sequence on the mRNA. Now once the tRNA has the amino acylation done, then it is said to be amino acylated tRNA or AA tRNA or charged tRNA. So charged tRNA means that the tRNA has amino acid attached to it. So that is called a charged tRNA. Now when it starts moving towards the ribosome, that is towards the mRNA, what happens? two charged tRNAs, they come closer to each other. So here you see this is one tRNA, this is another tRNA. So when they tend to come closer to each other, so what happens? The amino acids also tend to come closer to each other. Now since the bond is already a very weak bond, so their tendency of breaking that bond is very high. So what happens? The weak bond breaks. And when the weak bond breaks, any bond when it breaks, it releases a lot of energy. So when this high energy bond breaks, a lot of energy is released. And this energy is utilized for the formation of a new bond called peptide bond between the two amino acids. So basically, this will get released from here. So energy will be released and that energy will be utilized to form the bond between two amino acids. So this is how we can say that the energy which is actually used used up in formation of the peptide bond was actually provided by ATP when amino acylation had taken place. So I hope the entire concept is clear. So amino acylation means amino acid getting linked or amino acid getting bonded to the tRNA. So the bond which is formed is, has high energy but less stability. So as a result, when two charged tRNAs come near each other, since the bond was very weak, the bond tend to break. The energy which is released is utilized for the formation of peptide bond between the two amino acids. And as a result of this, a polypeptide chain is formed. So here you can see this is the polypeptide chain which is being formed. And this polypeptide chain will form the protein. So now let us look at the entire process of translation as a whole. So by now you've got to know all the bits and pieces of translation. But let us have a quick recap considering everything at one go. So in translation what happens? Initiated tRNA will recognize the start codon on mRNA. So now let us suppose the tRNA is carrying the amino acid. So tRNA comes near the mRNA sequence. Now when it comes here, it start to read the mRNA sequences which is present here. Now as soon as it recognizes the start codon, the process of translation starts. So start codon is methionine. Now the ribosome that is the smaller unit binds to mRNA. So you see this is mRNA. So here you can see this one is mRNA and mRNA binds to the smaller unit. This is the smaller unit and this is the larger unit. So peptide bond formation takes place in the larger unit but mRNA gets connected to the smaller unit. So charged tRNA binds to appropriate codon sequentially using complementary base pairing mechanisms. So here you can see the tRNAs, they are carrying amino acid and they come near the mRNA. Then from, with the help of their anti-codon loop, they match with the perfect, they match the amino acid with the perfect uh, base sequence which is present on the mRNA. So as a result, the amino acid sequence is decided by the sequence of bases on the mRNA. When two charged tRNAs are very close, peptide bond formation takes place with the one which we just now discussed. So when now one after one, the tRNAs keep coming. So the tRNAs are like extremely close to each other and as a result, in the same sequence, the amino acids start to form the peptide bond. 
So amino acid gets continuously added to the growing polypeptide chain. As you can see here, continuously the size of the polypeptide chain will keep on increasing and this is how proteins will be synthesized. So now this process of adding amino acid to the growing polypeptide chain will continue till a stop codon is recognized. So if you see the translation process from when to when it will continue that is determined by the start codon and the stop codon on the mRNA. So we already know that the sequence which sequence will stay tell it is a start codon that is AUG. Similarly the stop codon will be denoted by UU. A. So that means you have quite a few stop codons. I'm sorry, the stop codon is UAG. So that is the stop codon. So the three stop codons which are present, whenever they are encountered, then the process will stop. And then that piece of polypeptide which is being created, that protein will be released. So the translation is terminated and the polypeptide thus formed is released from the ribosome. So this is how the process of protein synthesis will take place in the ribosome. So now I hope that the entire process of uh, DNA replication and then transcription and then translation must be clear to you. So replication and transcription takes place inside the nucleus whereas translation takes place outside the nucleus in the ribosome which is located in the cytoplasm. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.